Hello YouTubers! Well, another video about the Fisher CA891 amplifier. Well, I pulled it out of a shelf because I really want to clean the speaker relays because um, they are dirty and so um, sometimes I don't get the full sound on one of the speakers and well of course that is really annoying so I want to look inside and try to repair that. I'm not sure if we've already done that but let's take a look at the features. Of course we have a power switch, speaker selector, headphones, a parametric equalizer which you can also turn off if you're using an equalizer, the nice view meter which can either show 2 watts or 200 watts. The input selector, this machine has so much inputs, has aux, VCR, television, compact disc, tuner, phono, tape 1, tape 2. And tape 2 is actually for connecting the amplifier to an equalizer. Here we have more buttons, we have the remote control sensor, I don't have the remote control, power standby, synchro record, muting, loudness, the volume regulators, unfortunately those are those up and down buttons which I absolutely don't like, a display which shows how much uh, volume we have, and then mono stereo switch, high filter, subsonic filter and balance. And this is the back side. We have, of course, all our input checks. We have three record outputs. One for VCR and the other two ones for tape. Then we have the connections for the system remote control, which I don't have. Record player, CD changer, cassette deck, tuner. I could hook up the tuner to this and um, hmm, it doesn't make too much sense without the remote control. Um, and then, of course, we also have a connection for a VCR. Of course, for a Fisher VCR. Even though all the inputs and outputs are marked right here, they are also written on right here. This is the huge heatsink. And right here we have two speaker outputs and also two switched power outlets. Right here an AC selector and of course the power input cord. And this unit was made in Japan. And this is the inside. You've already seen the inside, I know, but well, that video was pretty bad. So again, let's take a look inside. We have the huge transformer here. It's extremely huge compared with the size of my hand. You can see it, it's nearly as big and really it, it weights a ton. Uh, oh man, extremely heavy, really. Here we have the huge filter capacitors, 10,000 microfarad each. And down there we have the transistors of the power amplifier. There you can see them. Really huge things. And there are four of those. Two on top and two below that part of the heatsink. When I got the unit, I had to replace the two light bulbs, which light up the dial over the meters, the meter display. And now I want to try to take off the faceplate. And just as I expected, I can't take off the faceplate because there are the circuit boards and the display are all directly screwed onto the faceplate. And that's really one thing I hate about modern electronics, that you can't take off the faceplate without having a ton of problems. 
but there is also one thing I really like. You can take off the bottom to reach the main circuit board. And now, finally, let's try to repair the speaker relay. The speaker relay is located right there on the main circuit board. When I turn the amplifier on, you can see the relay turns the speakers on. There it goes. Of course, to clean the speaker relay, we first have to take off the plastic cover. Well, unfortunately, I was not able to take off the cover. As you can see, I had to cut a hole into the housing. So now we can try to clean the contacts of the relay. When I'm finished, I'll glue some scotch tape across the hole, so that should be okay. And this is how I'm going to clean the relays. As you can see, I cut these small paper stripes. I'm going to take my contact spray here and make these papers wet. Like this. Ah, works fine. There you can see, it's all wet with contact spray. And then I'm going to take the wet stripe of paper and put it between both contacts of the relays. And then I'm going to turn on the unit so that relay is activated. And when both contacts are closed and you know, pressed against the paper, I'm going to pull it out. Kind of complicated to get it in there. Okay, turn on the unit. Relay is activated. Now we pull out the stripe of paper. Slowly. Ah, I don't know if you can see that. Focus. Come on. Yeah. Maybe you can see that little bit of dirt there. That shows me that this is the right technique to do it. There's also a little bit of dirt on the other side. Right there. Well, even more dirt. And now I'm going to repeat that a couple of times until the contacts of both channels are nice and clean again. And I repeated that sometimes, as you can see. And now let's try out if it works. I have the Fisher amplifier hooked up to a pair of speakers and to my computer. And, well, I'm not sure if it's going to work this time. But when I first tested it, well, it was even worse than before. Hmm. Well, there was nothing on the right channel, and that was the channel that was bad before. So let's see if it works. Ah, this time it worked. That's the standby button. Another time. Of course, I already put scotch tape across the hole in the relay housing. Another time. Seems to work now. For some reason the camera is very blurry, blurry picture here. I'm going to turn it off with the 
regular power button. Ah, there it goes. Picture gets better. The display seems to have a bad influence. Let's turn it on again. Oh, this. Okay. And again. Well, I'm going to find out if it works reliable now in the in the next days, of course. And well, I hope the relay is working better now. And so, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.